Hello, our beautiful besties. Welcome back to Band Practice. I'm Emma. And I'm Madison. And today we're going to be doing a wellnessy episode. We've done a lot of like wellness wellness-esque episodes, mm-hmm. but I feel like we haven't done like a deep dive into our wellness journeys and like, you know, where we've been, where we're going, just like all encompassing our own wellness. So that's what we're doing today. We're giving you guys the full scoop. I, I agree. I feel like we incorporate wellness into a lot of things because it is just naturally something that we like are passionate about. But we haven't just done like a wellness 101 like we've done with manifestation. So yes. I feel like this is the perfect, perfect fun little episode. Yeah, I'm very excited. We're going to go into like what we think a wellness journey is, what we kind of define it as and go back all the way. I don't know where it starts for you, but like mm. high school middle yeah. school-esque for me, um, all the way to present day and what we want to happen in the future. I love it. I'm actually really excited about this episode. Me too. Me too. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. But first, we must catch up. <laughs> so um, I was going to say, I feel <laughs> I feel like the vibe of this episode is more, um, more deep because mm. <laughs> our last episode was... Um, pop culture as you know which we love and I just was thinking I told Ben this and he thought it was like the funniest thing ever but we got our first negative comments we did our um YouTube version of last week's episode you know popped off a little bit sometimes we get 30 views this episode we're we're over a thousand Uh so a lot of new people have seen um our podcast and some of them did not enjoy it no, every time I get a negative comment on TikTok or like whatever it may be, it's never happened for the podcast, but I always oh, tell yeah. Ben, I'm like, oh, somebody said this about me and he is my biggest hater. Like he thinks it's hilarious every time. So I was like, yeah, people said we were like, we talked too much in the intro or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was like, but it's a podcast. Like this was the one yeah. that he was like, that's not valid. Like a podcast is for talking. I was like, and thank you. So we're not going to let that stop us. And we're mm-hmm. still going to be chatty in the intro, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but I guess I can start yeah. life updates because I actually have one this week. Mm, just... Indy got his balls cut off. They're um, gone. They're gone. They're all gone. Yeah, We each got to keep one as a souvenir. Yeah. We keep them in a little jar on our <laughs> nightstand. <laughs> Can you it's imagine? like a lucky, what is it, lucky rabbit's tail or rabbit's yeah. foot, whatever that is. We like freeze dry it and put it on a keychain. Please. <laughs> it's literally a jelly cat. Like, Oh my, it's my favorite accessory. It's crazy. No, but he did get neutered um, and he also got some teeth pulled because he had like his little baby teeth that never fell out and he has been not living his best life he's just been sleeping knocked out he's on like a bunch of pain medication and that's been my weekend just like taking care of the baby because I feel terrible like baby's first Mm -hmm. surgery so sad it is sad Mm -hmm. but I bought him he like I knew he wouldn't put up with the cone like I knew he wouldn't even entertain it and so I got him a little um like surgery recovery onesie on Amazon because I've seen people use those so he's Mm. just like always in his little onesie because he can't like you know lick the area or anything like it's a it's a hazard so it has to be covered up so he's always just like in his little he looks like a literal baby because it like goes under the legs that has to cover everything (laughs) so I'm just looking at him right now just napping in his little onesie and I'm like he is a little baby it's ridiculous I wish I I could be there to help help him in his recovery. Mm-hmm. You would love him. it. The snuggles yeah. have been Ugh. out of this world because he's just like a limp little noodle. Yeah, <laughs> oh, sweet boy. Yeah, I'm so proud of him. I know he was so brave. The vet said he did great. Yeah, I was scared like because he has like he's very attached to me yeah. and Ben, and so when I dropped him off, I thought he was gonna freak out like as soon as I started leaving because that's I've never like left him at the vet. But he totally just ditched me. He like walked back with the vet. He was like, see ya. And then I was like, oh, okay, he'll be fine. <laughs> I love it. I That's like a good sign that like when your pet is comfortable with the vet staff. Yeah. Yeah. He, I know he gets so excited to go to the vet. He like ran yeah. in there that morning and I was like, you have no clue, little she buddy. No clue. The balls, like you're going to wake up with no balls. It's crazy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But luckily everything went good yeah. other than his baby teeth. It's a long, well, it's not a long story, but he had to get stitches in his mouth. So that's the only, the yeah. only, um, 
complication. So he's just stitched up everywhere. But he's on the road to recovery. We're a couple days out. He's doing good. Yeah, Frankenstein wiener. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but what about you? Hopefully something more exciting. Oh, more yeah. uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I guess during the week I didn't do much, but last night um, my boyfriend and I went to Pop Stroke, which is a new mini golf course that is like created by Tiger Woods. I think he has some around the country. Um, and it was like actually so fun. I feel like I wasn't super into mini golf growing up, but this one at first it was a bit rough, like mm-hmm. taking me like four to six, uh, you know, what do you even call that? Hits? I don't, I don't strokes. know. Strokes. Strokes. Yeah. Oh, that would make sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then finally, Andrew was like showing me like how to stand, how to hold the club. And like all of a sudden, dare I say, I was starting to do better than mm. him. Wow. And, like towards the end, like the final count, we were like not sure who was going to win. He ended up winning, but... I'm very confident that like the next time I go, I can really take it home. Like I think if if mini golf goes well, I might hit a big course. I'm and that's like the craziest thing I've ever said. Wow. Have you ever been to Top Golf? No, cuz I I've, I've just always been scared of it, but uh-huh. now I I'm kind of itching to go. I know. I was going to say my only like knowledge of golf is top golf because I've just been a couple times but Ben like showed me how to hold the club and like mm-hmm. stand and stuff and then we went to a mini golf thing not long ago here and I almost beat him up until the last hole it was like the same thing yeah. I was like I'm kind of like there's something to this I kind of yeah. get it and I feel like going to an actual golf course it kind of like I see I do see the appeal a little bit like you just yeah. have a drink you're like walking the course kind of sounds fun there's something so satisfying, like finally getting it in the hole. Mm-hmm. So That's the point of the game, yeah. And the, and like I get, <laughs> I understand. It's a very great feeling when you do it in few tries. Yeah, so. I can't imagine a hole in one. I would be no. like riding that high for weeks. I almost got a hole in one, even on the mini golf course, and it like hit it, like it like bounced over the hole. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's one update. Oh, and then this morning. Um, I just wanted to share a little food review for everyone. Okay. So I tried Dunkin' Donuts. They're, they have three Valentine's Day themed donuts out right now. And I really wanted to try them. So I did. Um, they have a brownie batter donut, a red velvet cake, frosted donut. Um, and then another one that's like, like, it's called Cupid's Choice, but it's a strawberry frosted like cream filled donut. They were all very delicious, but very, very sweet. I would say the brownie batter was my favorite. And that shocks me because I'm not really a chocolate person, but mm-hmm. it was scrumptious. So highly recommend. Um, and it's heart shaped, which is really cute. And I just, I love Valentine's Day. I think it is so cute and so fun. It doesn't need to be like this big deal, I feel like for relationships. Um, like it can just be like cute and fun and low key. Yeah, so I'm just like really in my V-Day spirit. I love that. Emma and I, we normally text each other good morning every morning. Mm -hmm. Like one of us will just text. But then this morning we randomly like sent each other just a random thought at the same time. And we're like, whoa, we're like connected. (laughs) This is crazy. And then she sent me a picture of the donuts. And I was like, you must be kidding. Like you must be (laughs) lying. Because I got donuts this morning too, but from Krispy Kreme. But we both specifically wanted the Valentine's Day donuts. And we're not like big donut people. No, I never like, get donuts. So random. But yours honestly sounded better. The like more fun flavors. I don't mine were just like right. just like normal. But with like heart shaped. Fide sprinkles and whatnot. Yeah, but the brownie batter does sound good. I've never had it like a donut like that. Delicious. Yeah. Wow. I do love a donut though. Don't get them often. But I love them. Yeah. So I just fun. forget how easy they are to get Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't know yeah um Um, hey madison what are you drinking just seamless seamless segue yeah thank you um i am drinking a poppy doc pop haven't had these in a long time and i was at target the other day got a couple and then i had one two days ago i opened it up i don't even know if i told you this it exploded it did, like yeah. bad, like the loudest bang ever. It like literally hurt my hand. I don't know like what part of the can hit my hand, but it like exploded as I opened wow. it. And I still had two more left in the fridge. I was like, well, 
I'm still gonna drink them. Like if I die, then yeah. at least I die like doing something I love. Take a risk. Yeah. So I popped one open, but I did open it before the podcast because I was like, I don't want it to literally explode all over my computer. That's fair. um. But this one didn't explode, so the risk was worth taking, and it's delicious. We like to hear it. Yeah. What are you drinking? So I have a really fun beverage. Um, along with my donuts this morning, I went to Black Rock Coffee. It's like a coffee chain in Arizona for any of um, the local folks. It's similar to like a Dutch Bros, which also I know isn't everywhere, but I don't know. I'm a- assuming most of our listeners know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But they have their version of like, you know, th- like a lot of coffee shops do mixed drinks with like some sort of energy drink. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have their versions and they have a ton of really fun flavor combos so the one I got is called sweet pea and it's their energy drink with strawberry peach and white chocolate Ooh, yum! <laughs> it's so good that sounds really good and it just looks the color like I can just tell that it's good mm-hmm. uh, I never would have thought to add like white chocolate to any sort of like energy drink but yeah it really hits just makes it a little creamy I love that. I know. I see. Um, I don't know if you get these TikToks, but like people working at, I think the one I get is in Alaska. It's like I specifically get like a coffee shop video of people. They like mainly do the like Red Bull energy yeah. drink things and like with all the different syrups and stuff. And they put just like straight up half and half in theirs. And people in the comments are either like, I need this immediately. Like, where are you? Or this is the mm. most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Which Th- my first initial thought is like I would never put milk in an energy drink, but I feel like I have had – it's like an Italian soda or something. Yeah, like exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. And so it just – yeah, it doesn't sound good, but it always is good. It always is. And we put creamer in Diet Coke sometimes. So yeah. It sounds weird until you try it, and then it's actually really delicious. So good. Oh, yeah. I want to go to Arizona and have that. Yeah, come on down. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we should just hop in. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can take it away because I'd love, I'd love Emma, to take it away. Yeah, she so kindly made the outline and and put the effort into this. So you can <laughs> you can tell us what's your what's your definition of a wellness yes. journey? So we're gonna start with kind of our wellness journeys. Um, and you might be thinking, what is a wellness journey? I think. It's kind of up to your interpretation. Like, it depends on the person. Like, I think it really just represents any relationship or, I guess, path you've had um, in relation to, like, your physical health, spiritual health, um, body relationship, food relationship, exercise, medicine, etc. Basically, like, your path to chasing chasing health and happiness, to me, is a wellness journey. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, trying to become your best self. Um, for me, I'll kind of go into my journey. I feel like I didn't really grow up very health conscious. Like my family, um, well, I grew up in like with divorced parents. So like one household was probably more healthy than the other. So like, I don't know, I didn't really have a super consistent outlook on like good foods to eat that are like are nutritious and everything or like, I don't know. It was just always kind of confusing for me. Um, so I didn't start dabbling in like lifestyle changes until college, um, when I started dabbling with veganism, which was partially influenced by Madison. And I feel like our whole little friend group was vegan for a while. So mm-hmm. also was, like the entirety of YouTube, the entire world. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was vegan for two years and then vegetarian for one. And that's kind of when I started to dabble with like, just like being conscious about the food I ate. Um, I feel like I kind of struggled with my relationship with food throughout my life. I grew up very, very thin. Um, and like people would comment about it a lot, but like like I remember the comments started when I was in like first grade with like girls at recess and it was just like weird to me because I had never been like conscious of my body before. Mm-hmm. Um, but I ate like really well, like in terms of like volume, like I would actually have like friends, families comment about like how I just was always hungry and like couldn't stop eating, Mm -hmm. but I was so thin and it was just like always kind of a spectacle to other people. And so that kind of caused me to be a little self-conscious about what I was looking like or like the foods I was eating. Um, And then 
it was after I graduated college when COVID started was when I kind of, I feel like had like my second puberty where like I started to fill out more. And so I wasn't stick thin, like people had always told me I was growing up. And so I kind of struggled with that almost, even though I actually wanted to put on weight and like feel like I looked healthier. Mm -hmm. But then having like that change start to happen was just like a weird identity struggle almost. And yeah, I've just had to like, now it's caused me to be a little bit more conscious in a good way, honestly, of like the food I eat because I was just the kind of person like if I was craving it, I would eat it. Like I would literally eat Taco Bell multiple times a day. (laughs) I love that. And I (laughs) every now and then, but like I've just had to really figure out what balance looks like for me because it's like on one hand, I want to allow myself to like indulge in like things that are really great but it's also important to like actually give your body the nutrients it needs and like properly fuel it so that I can feel well Mm -hmm. and like live my day-to-day life happy and healthy um because I I can definitely feel the difference as someone with IBS I uh, (laughs) uh, can tell when I'm eating well and when I'm not um but I don't know I feel like at the moment I'm kind of in a good place like mentally with my relationship with like my body and just like feeling very grateful for the things my body does for me like I'm actually in very good health and sure as a lot of people on earth like there's things that I look at that I like kind of have to like coach myself out of like having negative self-talk you know I think it's just kind of a natural part of life but I don't know I feel like I'm building a better relationship with my body and um my nutrition, even though, like, so I did have donuts this morning um, and my energy drink. No, but like, that's the thing is like, it's all about balance. And like, I know that my body's going to still need some like quality nutrients later on in the day. And so it's just kind of like, I don't know, figuring out the right balance. I've said that word 10 times. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's really yeah, what it's all about. It really is what it's all about. And I think it just depends on the person. Like for me, that's just the thing that's helped me keep a healthy relationship with all of this and like not letting things get to like a toxic obsession is to like give and take sort of sort of vibe but Mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of my wellness journey and I'm at a point where I'm just looking for like little things to kind of enhance my nutrition or um, my lifestyle just like trying to make small changes at a time but yeah love that I feel like we're both kind of in like a wellnessy era, yeah. But from like a really healthy place, so it's really fun to see like how we can go through that together and like what we're doing individually. Because mm-hmm. I don't know, I feel like it's rare and like a long time coming for people to be able to be able to do that from a healthy place, like you said. Totally. So I love that we're both feeling good and you know, look at us. Yeah, taking care of ourselves. It's great. Yes, taking care of you. Ugh. That's what it comes down to. Love it. I feel like as I was listening to you, like our wellness journeys kind of look similar in a lot of uh, ways. Yeah. Um, I feel like I always was aware of my body and my health. I feel like I did grow up in like more of a health conscious household. My mom like has always been very healthy and I was always, even as a very young girl, like a big consumer of media and pop culture mm. and like we grew up in the early 2000s with like the crazy magazines and like body yeah. shaming. And I feel like I always was aware of, like how women's bodies were viewed by society. And there always was, I felt like pressure from that from a very young age, even though I also grew up very thin. Um, like you said, like people started commenting on it so young, which is like yeah. sick and twisted. If you think about it, mm-hmm. it's like very weird to comment on a child's body. Um And I was confused, like, how body and health related and, like, Mm. what was good and what was bad. I knew that there was, like, good and bad in other people's eyes. But, like, you're so young that you can't really figure it out. But you're just, like, thrown into it as a young woman, which is really sad. Um, But that led to, like, through even middle school and high school, having ups and downs with my relationship with food and my body. I feel like we've talked about it a lot. My personality is just naturally like a little bit obsessive with things and like a little Mm. bit perfectionist and that carries over into like food and like maybe getting a little too obsessed with being healthy a little too obsessed with working out or like 
even being vegan for so long like there's so many things that I look back on and I didn't know that they were necessarily like disordered or unhealthy at the time but now that I like first of all have a degree in nutrition and second of all I'm just like older and wiser I'm like why was I literally counting calories in high school like that's weird yeah (laughs) yeah but I feel like it would be more common than not for other girls to like also have that Mm -hmm. experience um I feel like unfortunately it's a part of girlhood to have these phases and these ups and downs with our relationships with food and ourselves which is sad um but oh I also like like what you said I forget how you worded it but basically like you felt pressure or like just like pressure about your body changing because Mm. it changed like so much later maybe than other people and like yeah your body kind of was the same for so long and then when it changed you're like wait I want this but like is this good is this bad I feel like I kind of had the same feeling where like because I was praised almost and like my body was commented on so much for being thin once I did like start going through puberty or even just like filling out a little bit or whatever it is I felt like pressure to stay the same as I always had even though that was like literally a child's body which again I feel like is so common for a lot of girls but just looking back on it it's just like so so sick and weird Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but I also feel like there were different things in my life that were like unfortunately influencing me in a bad way like I got diagnosed with a gluten intolerance which actually is not a real thing (laughs) Oh. <laughs> um, but I didn't know any better and I like went to an allergist because I was having like some symptoms and she was like yeah you have to cut out gluten entirely when I was mm-hmm. I think like 14 or 15 so I was like cutting out entire food groups and like I didn't really even know what gluten was so I was like oh don't eat carbs you know what I mean like yeah th- I feel like a lot of different like medical professionals kind of failed me in that way <laughs> yeah like led me astray and now like having the knowledge that I do I'm just like that was incorrect and weird um but yeah I was like gluten-free for a phase I was vegan for a time now I'm vegetarian so I feel like I've kind of dabbled in a lot of different like wellnessy fads and eras Mm -hmm. maybe not always for the right reasons um and then Mm -hmm. I also like always grew up playing sports and being very active so all throughout high school I was like basically exercising every single day um and then once I graduated high school, I was like, oh, I don't have the structure of like a team sport or like practice or like structured workouts that I have to go to. So I ended up just like not really working out for a while because I'm like, wait, I don't know how to work out on my own. Like, this is weird. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would like maybe sometimes go to the gym every once in a while or something, but not really. Um, And then that pendulum kind of swang into me starting to go to workout classes and then going to like five a week yeah (laughs) being like obsessed with them I feel like that's like the common denominator in my wellness journey is just like all or nothing Mm -hmm. mindset for a long time which I'm glad I now realized is not healthy and like wasn't really serving me and now I have like you said a more balanced outlook which is what it's all about because yeah I feel like the all or nothing like yo-yo dieting of it all is never healthy in the end so no yeah um yeah now I feel like I'm at like a healthier place with my wellness all around and through like college and learning about nutrition and wellness I feel like I've taken a more holistic approach and like been able to look at health in a different way rather rather than just like all bad all good like being skinny equals healthy kind of like the bs that society feeds you um now I'm more focused on like how I'm feeling and just like yeah maintaining a holistically healthy lifestyle more than anything I love that thing look at us look at us um what you were saying about I realized I didn't really touch on like my relationship with exercise Mm -hmm. and that reminded me like my dad um would make me do some sort of physical activity every year when I was in school so like I mean, most of my life that was like PE, but then like high school came along and so I tried like tennis and then I did dance because I the rest of the time because that was actually fun. But then when I got to college and like he wasn't like in control of my life anymore, like I didn't have any sort of workout exercise regimen until COVID um, 
when I started doing Chloe Ting workouts at home. Yikes. And we can all imagine that face. <laughs> <laughs> um, A familiar story for many, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to throw that one in there. I really didn't have a point to saying that, but... Um, <laughs> Now you're in your yoga era. Yeah, now I'm in my dance class uh, era. Like a, a nice walk out in a park. That's kind of my vibe. Mm-hmm. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I surprisingly never did Chloe Ting. I don't know. Like, I miss that train. But it's like such a, um, it's like people's Roman Empire. Like, they're like the oh, yeah. Chloe Ting era. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like you're, you're like praying that your family doesn't like try to walk in yeah. on you and you're like doing like some ab workouts on the carpet. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> oh my goodness yeah Um, that's rough (laughs) those were hard too yeah i'll say that sometimes it's like the uh, like the random youtube videos you find that you just try out like i used to do a lot of at-home workouts through covid because you couldn't go anywhere Mm -hmm. oh my god i'd be like sweating and shaking and crying on my floor Mm -hmm. (laughs) i kind of realized that i really didn't like them because if I couldn't like complete one of like the I don't know circuits or something, I would I would be like I'm literally a failure. Like this is embarrassing, mm-hmm. and that's just like not the case. Like we're all on our own journey, and even through practices like yoga, I've learned that like our bodies are so different that like you're gonna have to adapt things to like suit what your capabilities are, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. But it felt wrong in the moment. Yeah, I feel like that's what makes at home things hard because like even going to a workout class, an instructor can see that like you're struggling or maybe like your strong suit isn't like your upper body strength, but you're really good at lower body stuff or whatever. So they can be like, oh, this one, like you can go down to your forearms or whatever, like if you need to, like they give you different things. But then Chloe Ting was probably like, do 20 push ups and like, Mm -hmm. that's it. Like, period. If you can't, like, (laughs) oh, well. exactly yeah Mm. I guess we can go into creating new habits because I feel like we are both very much like habit and goal people especially when it Mm -hmm. comes to our wellness and our lifestyle um big habit girlies I feel like what got me into that well I feel like in general people know about habits and goals but I feel like what really like drove it home for me was the book Atomic Habits which I know we've Mm -hmm. talked about before but that was like I read that maybe like four years ago like beginning of college or something and I was like my life has forever changed like this is crazy (laughs) um but we wanted to talk about how you can like create a new habit and make it stick because the most important part of a habit is like sticking to it and Mm -hmm. making sure it is realistic and fits into your lifestyle so that you can you know keep doing it Um, So our first point is that habits require a lot of discipline and more than anything, consistency for them to stick. I feel like a lot of times people have good intentions when setting a Mm -hmm. a habit or goal, but it's just like not going to work for you. And if you were just honest with yourself from the get go, you would realize that like, obviously that can't stick because I can't be consistent with it. Um, So I think like before you even set a habit or try to create a habit, you need to look at like how it actually fits into your life and how it's going to work because you need to be able to stick to it. Like I said, for it to yeah. be a habit, <laughs> that's like the definition <laughs> of a habit. You need to do it often. Um, so yeah, you need to be honest with yourself and disciplined mm-hmm. for it to work. Yeah. Um, something that I've learned is like the idea of habit stacking. Like that's something that really helps. Cause like, like we said, like, a habit will become habit once you do it enough, like enough repetition, you've kept yourself accountable and all of a sudden it'll just be second nature and a part of your lifestyle. But like to get to that point can be kind of tricky. So um, habit stopping, habit, <laughs> habit, <laughs> habit slopper, <laughs> <laughs> habit stacking is when you combine like a new habit with something you already do or something you really enjoy um, to kind of like get the, uh, like satisfaction out of doing it. So an example of one thing uh, for me, I wanted to create the habit of taking supplements every day because for some reason that was something I just always struggled with. Um, And we've talked about this before, but I started taking them with my Lexapro at nighttime. Um, And I, for some reason, just thought that like you can't take, like you're supposed to take vitamins in the morning 
and maybe that is better but like like I just never thought that I could take them at night before bed I don't know Mm -hmm. um but since I already take my birth control and Lexapro every night before bed like that's already a habit I don't even think about I just started taking my supplements with them and I haven't missed a day in the last month and now it's just a, a part of my routine so I successfully um adopt that new habit um and then like another example of habit stacking with something you enjoy would be like if say you want to like introduce journaling into like your morning routine if you do it while you're like drinking your morning coffee instead of sitting there and scrolling with your coffee then you're combining the act of doing something you really like a fun part of your day with which is your jesus christ (laughs) a fun part of your day with your coffee and not your journaling and if you just combine those two every day it'll just become a part of your routine and now and now it's just your lifestyle yeah, I love that. I feel like, is that from Atomic Habits or did I you hear that? that? Okay. Yeah. Cause I remember that was like one of my biggest takeaways from the book. Cause I'd never heard anybody talk about it or like, obviously you could think of that on your own, but like when somebody mm-hmm. just says it to you like that, you're like, oh, I could like, it it's almost sense. like, yeah, it like clicks in your head that you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I can like fit it into my life that way. And now I do that all the time with stuff to where I don't even realize it, but like, I was telling Emma the other day, I was sending her voice memos because I also got a new phone this weekend and something about me is that my phone is a mess. (laughs) It's so chaotic. Like for a clean and organized woman, like her data trail is gnarly. Mm -hmm. Like to the point where I have 40,000 pictures on my phone and I thought that was normal until Emma showed me hers. She has like a thousand. Yeah. I was flabbergasted. (laughs) And then to really like drive it home the guy at the phone store looked at my storage and he was like this is ridiculous he was like I'm sorry no offense but like how did you do this (laughs) so anyways once I got my new phone I was like I need to clean it up like I'm going to respect Mm -hmm. my phone I need to like literally treat it with respect like I use and abuse my phone to no end and so I wanted to start like cleaning out my pictures I also always have hundreds of unread texts Mm -hmm. um just like apps that I don't use not in folders like it's just so messy and it actually does really bother me but I just like was so overwhelmed by it because it had gone so far that I was like I don't even want to deal with it but anyways I decided to prioritize it and so I told Emma without even realizing that I was habit stacking that I'm going to have like a digital cleanup every night in my nightly bath because I already take a bath like pretty much every night and I was like while I'm in there instead of scrolling I can still be on my phone but I'm going to be cleaning it up and I'm down to 30,000 pictures I've already cleaned out 10,000 pictures because most of them were just random screenshots and like multiples (laughs) and I just went through and deleted a bunch but um yeah it kind of makes it feel like not a chore it's like effortless Mm -hmm. if you are like adding something onto your routine that you already do instead Mm -hmm. of just like trying to throw something random in like at a time where you don't normally already have a little bit of structure and routine it's easier to like add stuff on to a pre-existing routine or habit exactly I feel like that's the key Mm -hmm. Um, I also think it's important to like start small because I mean, I've been victim of this where I'm like, I like new year, new me, like I'm changing everything, like everything has got to go like new morning routine. But when you try to completely change your lifestyle all at once, I feel like you're just setting yourself up for failure because it's overwhelming to like have too many new habits going at once. Like it takes honestly a lot of effort and a lot of accountability to create like new habits like this. So doing a ton at once is just too much, I think, for one person to actually stick to. So start small. Um, An example I have of this recently, um, I'm trying to like grocery shop more because (laughs) I just get into these ruts where all of a sudden I like don't realize it and I'm like eating out for like multiple times a day. I'm like, what is going on here? (laughs) Um, So and like normally when I eat out, it's like not the most nutritious of meals. So Um, instead of being like, okay, now I'm cooking every meal, like I can only eat out once a week. Like that would just be too difficult for me to accomplish because it's too different from my normal routine. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this week I'm going to focus on grocery shopping for like 
healthy, nutritious snacks. Like that'll be my focus for the week. If I, I get other stuff or I'm inspired to eat a better meal f- at other times, like that's totally cool. But like my focus right now is like figuring out what healthy snacks I like to keep at home. And then like the next week I was like, okay, now I'll like focus on breakfast. Like what are some breakfasts I can keep at home um, that'll like help me start the day off really well. Um, and so it's just easier when you like try to accomplish a big goal and like bite-sized habits and doing them one at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's where a lot of people kind of make a mistake because I feel like this is again an area where you just need to be like brutally honest with yourself. And even if you are craving like a total 180 and like big change in your life, you can work your way up to there and have it be a lot more sustainable in the long run. Like I feel like a lot of people go from like not really working at a out at all to seeing other people work out like five times a week and they're like oh okay I'm gonna start working out five Mm -hmm. times a week like them and it's like no you're not like yeah maybe for one week but it's just and it's not your fault like it's nobody's fault it's just not sustainable for you to go from zero to 100 like that but I feel like that is everybody's like instinct to just Mm -hmm. like completely transform their life overnight when they get like that burst of motivation I'm a victim of that yeah (laughs) but I feel like it's going to be so much more sustainable and healthy for you in the long run to maybe do like one workout a week and then after a month do two or three days, you know, and work Mm -hmm. your way up to five if that's where you want to be. Because doing one workout a week for a month is way healthier than doing five workouts a week for just one week. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like it's all about the longevity and Mm. like the sustainability of the habit in your life because it's going to have such a better payoff in the end. Ah longevity i love that word oh, buzzword buzzword longevity you heard it here first <laughs> spell it um no thank you <laughs> no not right not right now no, maybe no. later wait what <laughs> wait i can't hear anything <laughs> having some technical difficulties that's crazy oh my computer died bye <laughs> <laughs> um so let's chat about habits that we're currently working on um the one i'm struggling the most with is reading every day Mm -hmm. I am such an inconsistent reader like when I get into a book I can read it in just like two or three days and then three months go by and I haven't picked up another book like for some reason I really do enjoy reading but it's just difficult for me to fit it into my day even though I have plenty of free time Mm -hmm. so that's kind of the one that I I wrote in our notes I am epically failing at because I just haven't figured out like I feel like timing like we've said, is so crucial in creating habits. And I just can't figure out where to fit it into my routine. Um, Open to suggestions, but that's kind of um, a big habit that I'm working on for this year. Um, One of my habits for this year is also reading every day, which I am also failing at. (laughs) Um, I feel like it's just such a hard one for me because like you said, like some days I'll sit there and read for like an hour like Mm -hmm. maybe two hours if I'm feeling crazy and then other days it's like I'm running errands or something and I don't have time to just sit down and read for like an hour so then I just won't read at all where I feel like I don't know where I could fit it in for my day that like could be consistent every day but I wish I could just like at least do like 15 minutes if not more Mm -hmm. at the same time every day do you know what I mean like that's clearly what I need but like you I can't figure out the time I also feel like I just realized this as I was talking but I feel like both of us probably because sometimes you go into the office and sometimes you don't and like sometimes I nanny and sometimes I don't that my days aren't all the Mm -hmm. same whereas like people who go into the office five days a week it's like they have the structure of that so I think I'm going to start waking up at the same time every day and like starting my day as if I'm going to work even if I'm at home do you know what I mean? I like that. Yeah. Because then I feel like it could be a part of my morning every morning. Mm. I think I'm going to try that and I'll report back. But yeah, yeah, I love reading and it always makes me feel good. And it's just so sick and twisted that our minds do that. Like, I know it would make me I'm feel like, better. I literally like to do this. Why is it hard to do? Right. I enjoy I think it. It's just like my attention span. Like, I'm so br- like my brain is so rotted. It's hard for me to sit down in silence and read. Mm -hmm. without distractions it's embarrassing yeah but then sometimes we sit there and read for hours like we finished that Mm -hmm. last book that we read together in like three days yeah doesn't make sense 
I know that's the part that gets me. It's like, <laughs> I like to do this and I know it will make me feel good and I yeah. somehow cannot do it. <laughs> I'm not sure why, like where the disconnect, where the, the block yeah. is. I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Um, my other habit that I'm working on, which is going pretty well, is to have fruits and veggies every day. It's so like, this is so... um like elementary school nutrition core, like the food pyramid. But it's really just like, I mean, fruits and veggies are good for you. I don't know what to say, but um, it's just not something I've always been like conscious about. Um, So it's been kind of a fun thing to just like, just think about, like, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself, but like even before this episode, I was a little hungry. So I had some fresh fruit Mm -hmm. and I'll just make sure I get some veggies in there. I don't know. It's just kind of like my my food focus I guess and it encourages me to eat at home more because obviously the produce is at home Mm -hmm. can't really get that uh at Taco Bell so (laughs) (laughs) that is very true (laughs) yep (sighs) um I also have like a food kind of goal which mine is to eat more protein at breakfast Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys, I feel like this is kind of trendy right now, like 20 to 30 grams at breakfast. I see a lot of that on TikTok. Um, But especially after years of being vegan, like you don't really eat that much protein at breakfast specifically because like, I feel like a lot of people get their protein from like eggs or like yogurt in the morning. And I was not eating those things for a long time. So I realized like I really had most of my protein later on in the day. But I do feel best if I have like 20 to 30 grams right in the morning. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm focusing on like adding in different things or like trying new things. I've been adding in eggs and like sometimes Greek yogurt experimenting with mm-hmm. that. Or if I have just like toast or like avocado toast or something for more, for breakfast, I'll make like a little protein shake on the side. It's just like being more intentional and like taking note of things Mm -hmm. because I do notice that like my energy is higher throughout the day and I feel like more satiated throughout the day if I start my day with something more protein heavy yeah um I don't have another one but I did have a note based on what you said I think another important thing about adopting like new habits is like taking a moment to recognize like how it made you feel and like really grasping like, oh, that actually made me feel really good, like physically or mentally. And I don't know, just associating the positive feelings with it will make it kind of help the the sustainability of keeping up with it. At the end of the day, it's really like what you care about and what makes you feel the best that's going to stick. So like being mindful, like you said, of how it makes you feel like and focusing on the positives, I think is a really good way to look at it rather mm-hmm. than just doing things because you feel like you should or because you see other people doing them. Like the habits that are healthiest for you are the ones that make you feel good, period. Yeah. Like you don't have to be emulating anything else or like doing things that you don't really love and don't make you feel good because that's really not doing you any favors. Yeah. It's going to be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Just because the kitty girl on TikTok is doing it doesn't mean it'll fit into your lifestyle and make you feel good too. Exactly. I know. I I feel like I learned like a lot about that with nutrition, obviously in college, Mm -hmm. because like there's so many things that are just blanket statements that people say, like even me saying I want to eat more protein at breakfast. Some people could eat protein in the morning and feel like sick or like, you know, it doesn't make their stomach feel good or something. Even down to like, like yours, like fruits and vegetables. It's like, obviously those are healthy things for you, but like some people have different gut issues to where like if they Mm -hmm. ate a lot of raw veggies, it would actually hurt their stomach and like yeah. not make them feel good. So there's so many things that like you think would be healthy for everyone, like no questions asked. But then mm-hmm. if you try to do them and they don't feel good, feel no pressure to stick to them because like, yeah, it's just not going to work for you. Maybe. Exactly. That's a good point. Thanks. Um, I did have one last habit and that's something that I was good at for a long time and then I have not been so good at lately and it is showing. So I'd like to start <laughs> it back up. Um, opening and closing shifts every day in my home, which is again, it's pretty individual. But like for me, closing, I need to go to bed with a clean kitchen. If there mm-hmm. are dishes, if the dishwasher is full and it's not running, like if there's little the counters are not wiped down. 
it makes me sick. Like I can't handle it. And so it's very important for me to clean up the kitchen at the end of the night, close down the kitchen, if you will. And then in the morning, I like to like make my bed. We've obviously talked about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe throw in a load of laundry. Like there's just like certain habits that I like to do that make me feel good and make my mind clearer and overall make it like easier to have a tidy home. Um, And I feel like I was kind of slacking on that for a while, especially like after getting indie, I feel like getting a dog is like a really big life change. Mm -hmm. And looking back, like my life was so different before him and now like so many things that I've kind of let myself slip on that I want to get back to especially now that he's like out of the puppy stage and is much more independent it's gotten a lot easier so I have time to myself like in the morning and night now that I can reintroduce that habit again so I'm excited for that oh I love that that's nice I just feel like the moral of the story is like a happy body like a healthy happy body and like you said a clean environment just gives me like the most positive, happy mind. Like I'm spiritually and mentally feeling my best when I'm taking care of myself and my environment. Mm-hmm. Hard pill to swallow that unfortunately all unfortunately, these things. Unfortunately, yep. They do. are all connected. Yep. They make you feel better. They make your, you know, your mental health yeah. better. Really sucks. Um, mm-hmm. But unfortunately, it's the truth. Yeah. Even like I was reflecting on different habits that I've had in the past and stuff before we recorded this and last year remember my running era my running phase oh yeah loved it like I loved and it was so like such a quick workout because you just run a couple miles and like you Mm -hmm. know it doesn't take an hour just takes like 30 minutes or whatever warm up run a couple miles cool down and I was like that made me feel amazing like I felt so healthy. I felt so strong. I felt like I was making progress towards a goal. So I'm re-entering my running era. I decided literally today that I'm going to start tonight and go. I literally have a gym at my complex. Like there's no excuses. I can just mosey my way on down there, run a mile or two, be back in a couple minutes. Like it's not that hard. And I enjoy it and it makes me feel good once again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why I wouldn't do it. Right. I'm excited for you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Well, that was it for today's wellness deep dive. I hope you enjoyed this episode and maybe found some inspiration about kind of adapting new habits and just ways that we can take better care of ourselves. Yeah, this was a really fun episode. I hope you guys enjoy it so that we can do more wellnessy type things Mm -hmm. because wellness is something that's very important to both of us. And it's always just like a very relevant topic for everyone's life. Like, yeah, everybody cares about their health in some capacity and you know it's always a work in progress for everyone so I love this episode and thank you guys for listening we love you make sure to leave a rating and review follow our podcast on apple Podcasts or spotify you can keep up with us on our socials that are linked in the description down below and we'll see you next week yeah chat to you later I thought you were gonna say ciao Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Bye.